So hello there, friends. So today, what we're gonna be talking about is the spray gun. Okay, for glue. Okay, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I use. And maybe you use the same thing too, maybe not. Maybe you're gonna learn something new. So here we go. So this is it. Look at that. I get a lot of comments about what spray gun do I use? And what, especially they'll say, well, what size tip do you use when you're spraying glue, the contact adhesive? Okay, so what I always tell them in the comments is I just use the cheapo Harbor Freight $27 spray gun. Okay, and whatever the tip comes with, I have no idea. It's just whatever the tip it, it comes with, that's the size that I use. So it's just stock out of the box. There's no changes at all. I just pull it out of the box and start using it. And I get a lot of comments about what glue I use. So this is what I use. It's a contact adhesive. It doesn't have to be this name brand. Any contact adhesive that you can get at the big box store will do. Some comments about glue or they'll be asking me, what do I use to thin it with? Or do I use certain chemicals or other liquefied whatever to thin it out? And I tell them, I say, no, it goes straight from this can straight to my spray gun. And also, what do I use to clean up the glue? So this here works excellent in cleaning up the glue. It's a lot cheaper than that stuff that sounds like uh, three men manufacture. Anyway, uh, you can get the stuff here by the gallon at the big box store. And it's fairly inexp inexpensive. And it works 100% of the time. So now for maintenance. Okay, people, they'll say, well... How often do I clean the gun? My answer is always, almost never. And then people will say, well, do you empty the cup when you're not using the gun? And I tell them, well, like never. There's always glue in there. Okay, the only time that I'd ever have a problem is if it's like 105 outside, it's really hot, and I have just a short or, little, or a small amount of glue in the bottom of the cup, and I don't touch it for a week or two. Like if I want a vacation, I come back and the bottom here will be real gummy. So I would that's the time I would have to clean that out. But if it's in normal use all the time, I just pour the glue in and I just spray it. Pour the glue in and spray it. Pour the glue in and spray it. Okay, other maintenance items. Really, the only thing I ever clean is this tip right here. So what I'll do... I'll just take some of this mineral spirits. Dab it on there. And then what I do is I just let it sit for a few minutes. And what it does is this mineral spirits, it separates the glue from whatever it's on. So it's not like a thinner. So it doesn't thin the glue what it does is it makes it ball up. So once it gets behind the glue and it soaks like that, it'll start peeling up. As you can see here, after a few minutes, that glue separates from whatever it's on. You see that right there? And it just really just peels up and it's and it's got this gooey stretchy right that's how it comes off like you can see it didn't get thin or spread anywhere it all comes off that way not bad huh hit the like button do it do it now there you go. That should do it. So the reason that I never have to clean the gun from the glue is because this contact adhesive, when it touches itself again later, it reactivates. So you can glue something 
put some glue on something like maybe a, a hard plastic piece and let it sit for a few days and then uh, go back and, and spray another light coat over it and it reactivates actually reactivates the glue on that part again so that's the nice thing about the contact adhesive so a lot of time on the comments people will ask me what kind of spray can adhesive do I use and I tell them I never ever use spray can adhesive because it's not reliable. Okay, the one you know the one I'm talking about, the one that another one that's made by three men. Okay, so anyway, there's horror stories all over the place about how that uh, spray can adhesive everything it's a temporary. It, it just falls apart over time. Okay, where this one here. It has been proven to be effective 100% of the time it's tried. Now this is what I've used for an air compressor for a number of years. You can see the dust on it. Anyway, this thing here is humongous for my use. Okay, this thing will run a body shop. Okay, and I realized it was kind of overkill because I don't, and the only thing I really use it for is my spray gun, a staple gun, and other light duty air power tools. A ratchet, air ratchet, and that kind of thing. So I went from this, you know, running 220 electricity. I, don't, I would have to say though that it almost never ran because it would hold the air pressure enough for me just to spray my glue gun and every once in a great while it would turn on. So I went from that to this. Pick this up at old HF. This is not sponsored. Okay, I pay for my own stuff. I never go begging for sponsors. So anyway, those are the specifics right there. It runs on 110 electricity. As you can see, I got my solar stuff set up here. So I'm going to be able to run this off of 110, not the 220. So I have been using this recently and it works just fine for the spray gun. Okay, and it doesn't use that much, it doesn't turn on that often. And when it does, it runs for about a minute and a half and then it'll shut off. So to fill it up, all I do is just pour it right in. So what I'm going to be demonstrating now is technique number 71. Okay, so technique number 71 is I'm going to be using a piece of scrim right here. So it's fabric backed foam for sewing. Okay, I'm going to sew. Normally you don't glue the back side, the black side. You put the glue on the foam side. But for the display purposes here, demonstration purposes, what I'm going to be doing is spraying over the black so that we understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so what that technique number 71 is, is how to spray the glue. Okay, what the technique is, is when you're spraying glue, okay, like that, what you don't want to do is spray directly down onto whatever it is that you're spraying. What will happen is you'll get a concentration of glue like that or like that, right? So that's not what you want, especially if you're gluing on foam because what happens is that glue, it soaks right into the foam. Okay, and you don't want that because then you're going to get dense and you're going to get a lot of nastiness showing. So the technique is spraying at an angle. What you're going to do is you're going to spray it out here Spray it out here, and you're gonna let it. You're gonna let it shoot out across, not down. So you let it shoot out across and let it fan out. And what it does is it floats in the air and it lands gently on your foam. You see that? And you'll probably see that on every single one of my videos.
This is the real world demonstration right here. So what you do is you just spray and let it fan out. And technique number 98 is where there is no glue, what? It won't stick. And this is a short demonstration about putting too much glue in one spot. Like what I talked about, and instead of letting it fan out to shoot straight down on something. Okay, we got way too much glue there. We're going to come back to that in a few minutes and we're going to see what the outcome is. And while we're waiting for the paint to dry, so to speak, I get a lot of comments about people asking me how long do I let the glue sit before I put the two pieces together. As you may know, on contact adhesive what you do is you spray one side then you spray the other side. You have two sides that you're trying to put something together. So you glue one side, you glue the other side and how long should you wait before you put them both together? Okay, so this is the age-old question. So the answer I always give is if you're gluing something hard, like, like wood or plastic or metal, and then you're putting something soft like this, and like you're going like to wrap it, okay, what you do is I usually let it sit about five minutes before I put the two pieces together. Okay, but if we're talking about soft to soft, like if we're putting material on top of here, vinyl, fabric, leather, if we're gluing something here to the foam, what I do is I put them together right away. Okay, there's no waiting. And you're saying, what? No waiting with contact adhesive? Okay, the reason for that is because if when you're going soft to soft, like this here, I sprayed this a little while ago, when you go soft to soft, it, it sticks really good. If you let it dry too long, it won't stick very well. So maybe now you have a new understanding, maybe something you didn't know before. So now we're back to our saturated piece here. This is the close-up. So you can see how it bubbled like that. It raised and it misshapen the foam. Okay, because we got too much glue in that one spot. The other thing is, now that it's saturated, okay, what's going to happen is it's going to also dent because there's glue on the inside, especially after it dries a little while. So what happens is a lot of guys that are doing, say, like headliners with a foam back material like this, if they get too much glue in one spot, when you go to put up the headliner, so that leads us up to a totally separate technique for another video. But that technique, since we're on the subject, is technique number 634. Okay, what that is, is if you're putting up a headliner after you sprayed foam like this, what you wanna do is, what I do is I let it really sit up for a good 24 hours. I wait a day to put the headliner back up into the car. So what I don't do is I never use my fingers like this to hold the headliner. Okay, because what that'll do is that'll put dents in there and you'll see little, looks like little craters everywhere. And believe me, I've seen that. Maybe you have too. Okay, so what I use is I use my flat hand to hold the headliner. That way you don't get the dents. Oh yeah, and one other comment I always get is, do I always have to use a spray gun? And I say, well, no, you can also use a brush. An excellent example of that would be like on this 1964 Ferrari 330 GT back seat cushion. Look at that. That was a definitely a paintbrush. Right there you can actually see the brush strokes. Mm-hmm. Till next time we'll see ya.